Welcome to this week's episode of Home Again TV. This week we will talk about America's favorite pastime, the sport of baseball. We will better understand why the Negro Baseball League existed. We will discover key players locally and nationally while learning the value of legacy and how sports can play a vital role in its success. Stay tuned!
said, there's no sound too. <clears throat> Was it something not there? Okay. So give me a thumbs up if you guys have sound now. Give me some thumbs up, Gaga. Let me know that you have sound. Hey, Devontae. I got your phone call yesterday. I got to call you back this week. You know the weekends are full of activities. Hey, Julie. Thanks for joining in. Julie is with Heal Her. She's just all over the place nowadays. Thanks for joining. Julie, if you could share or tag anyone that you know, I think this is a really interesting conversation for you, considering that you have a son that plays sports. We're trying to dive into that conversation so that the next generation is possibly prepared to take over baseball. Baseball makes lots of money. And I think that's one of the challenges that we have as to why we're limited opportunities. Uh, but we want to change that conversation. And one of the people I have with me today is Calvin, who is not only an athlete himself, but is a, an advocate, a community activist, who's trying to change the trajectory of what it means to be an African-American athlete and what it means to carry that legacy to the next generation, which is huge. I have a small clip that I'd like you guys to watch for a couple of seconds while we transition our set, and I'll see you guys back here in a second. The first African American to play professionally in Ohio's capital city was Jay Higgins for the 1887 Columbus Buckeyes. Higgins played his first game on July 2nd, 1887. He was primarily a catcher who also filled in in third base and center field. Higgins' first name never appeared in the newspaper of the day, but the Ohio State Journal reported on his elegant work. Higgins was one of four African Americans to play in the Ohio State League in 1887. The first Negro League team to call Columbus home were the 1900 Black Tourists. They were an independent team. Bud Fowler was the team's player manager. Fowler was the leading African American player of the 19th century. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you just saw the clip, I want to say that clip was in regards to the 614 and what it is that we did to create the energy in the African American experience regarding baseball. I have my friend here with me, Calvin. For those of you that are just joining in, we're talking about the history of baseball regarding African Americans. And sometimes we didn't always have a good position in the uh, conversation or even in the position of being able to play on the field with other baseball players, right? Well, historically, we were never given the opportunity. Right. Other opportunities. When I look back over my childhood, um, I oftentimes think of being the long and the traveling and all stars. I actually saw that when I was a child because where I'm from, in the hills of West Virginia, we had a field, and the Negroes would actually only come through on bus and put on a show. Now, how old are you, just so that they know? 67. I so you're 68. This year. I, I actually saw Negroes because my cousins were actually pitchers, you know, because that was a, it was actually. A show. They actually come to it, and people, people actually, yeah. Well, I think what's real cool about that, Calvin, is you said you have cousins that were in the league. Mm -hmm. Specifically, we're talking about the Jerry Junior and Senior. Well, the, the, and that, Sam. You know, when, when you when you look at the history of the Harrisons going all the way back, they're the longest serving family in the Negro race. Mm -hmm. They all the way go all the way back to Sam Harrison. Right, that's who I was thinking, Sam Harrison. So, so the, and then Barry, yeah, the, in fact, Barry played at Cincinnati. But the, they're the longest serving family in the Negro. 
But what I think is big about that is the idea of legacy. Because sometimes it's difficult for us to identify that one thing that we can pass on from generation to generation. And it seems like your family passes on the gift of athleticism. Well, I chose basketball. Okay. I didn't, I, I wasn't into, but I knew the, 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 yeah, there's a, there's a connection, basketball, football, like in, in uh, you know, when we look back over the history of the impact of sports, that was your gateway to get out of the hood. Exactly. That was that was the means of the by. But it seems like today, for some reason, we're going backwards. I mean, it's like, I mean, it's more formers in the big now. They go outside the United States, we're losing. Well, I think a lot of that, and that's why we're having a conversation about it, a lot of it is uh, a lack of exposure to the sports. Children's work ethics different. Um, physically as well as mentally so we can't always expect for them to be what we were because right. they just don't have the work ethic that we had it's different it's very, it's different I think they've shifted it to something else unlike during our time but one thing that I want to talk about is baseball not being so popular now for the african-american person but I think it's even bigger and it's been evolving into that for many of years because it seems like uh, when the uh, African or Negro Leagues was accessible that they had a different energy. They would play music and they would have tap dancers that would entertain the audience. And I think specifically, I remember, uh, I think it was Jackie Robinson yeah. becoming uh, frustrated with that type of ball game or ball playing because it just wasn't traditional. Do you think that if we was able to captivate that same energy again, that baseball could be popular once again well, in our community? Well, I think what, what we have lost is sense of community mm -hmm. and the, the connection. We're, 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 we're losing it, we're losing it. And I chose uh, personally myself and my kids and my community just to try to uh, infuse a sense of where we come from. Sports in the black community has always been the, the gateway to get out, to move up, move up. But I think what, 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 when we move up, sometimes we move out. And we lose, so we're losing we're losing that, so that's, that's really what I'm concerned. Well, I think just like in baseball, because I watched the movie, I forget the name of it, it's the one talking about all of this, and one of the things that concerned me was evolution meant going to the white league. Wow. Yeah. So here we are, we're a strong league, we're making money, not of course in comparison to the money that they were making, but it seemed like the league had its own uh, stability, but then they started borrowing or taking our major players right. onto the white league, and at that point, the black league became not popular right. because then at it that could, point it couldn't, it, couldn't, it, couldn't sustain it, it couldn't sustain itself, all because. And I think it, it was intentional. I think it was institutionally set up to do that. Well, what if we thought of it as, because it literally just went flat at that point, it did, right? It did, it did. What if we thought of it as a progression? As like they do the minor leagues now? Because mm -hmm. I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, are the Clippers affiliated somehow with the Cleveland mm -hmm. Indians? They're the, they're the farm league. Farm league. So but they've always been the farm league, but it seems like, yeah. Because I, historically, like in Columbus, mm -hmm. we really never could play. Uh, when the Negro League was playing, we played it on the backside of the Clippers Stadium on Main Street. We talked about that, and we have actually a small picture of me um, since you're, again, I love when you share information with me. On the backside, not on the, not on the Clippers side, but on the backside, 
after everybody else had played, mm -hmm. then we were allowed to play on the back side. But do you know in between on the back side of the of Clippers Stadium what exists there? The cemetery. Cemeteries! <laughs> <laughs> on both sides. <laughs> I said he was like he was like, Do you think this is where it is? And I looked over yeah, here. Yeah. I looked over there. I said, Yep, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly where it was. Right. That's where they send us to play. Oh man. Wow. See, and that was just an wow. assumption. That was intentional. Wow, is that is that something of what? Yeah, yeah, but you know what? We've got to learn our strength. We've got to learn our 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 strength together, because again, they were trying to they try to stifle our ability. But once we're all together, hence the African American League, they see how popular and how attractive it is and how successful it can become. But then we don't maintain it. We lose it. We lose it all because of the opportunity. Because now they do it with music. Wow. Just think about um, Beyonce and Jay-Z. They call it uh, mainstream, mm -hmm. where you were after you were uh, rock and roll, or I should say R&B, uh, but then you go to mainstream, and mainstream basically means you got white people listening and buying your music. That's right. <laughs> and that's when you made it. Why is that the, why is that the case? Well, what do you think? Why is it that that is the level of epitome? Well, and, and I think, I think it's intentional. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not so you're not successful until you get mainstream, until you get them listening to you. And I'll give you an example of it. Jazz, which was traditionally our music, mm -hmm. is now international music because more white folks like jazz. That's so sad. But do you notice that also is uh, in most um, categories, that's sort of the alternative step is to take it international. If one, go, if go, we go, go black, and then it doesn't go to mainstream, take it, take it international. That's and it seems like that's what they did with baseball regarding Cuba, yeah. Cubans, right? Yeah, that's why they brought them in. Now. Yeah. They brought them in the back door. They bought <laughs> 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 is a mess. <laughs> but they really did. Not the Just not the same. The same thing, the same thing they did to us. <laughs> but, you know, but guess what they did? They bring them in cheap, too. And then I have to, like, they bring them in cheap. Like but they, then. Like they did in Mexico. But you know what that's all about? <laughs> Never saying it's a black person. <laughs> <laughs> did you hear the story? No, tell me. Okay, I'm going to tell you, uh, uh, one of the, I wish I wrote his name down, he's an advocate or he's an old player. Okay. And he told this story about um, a guy, a black guy, trying out or wanting to try out for a team. Okay. And he was the owner of the team. He's the owner of the he's team. He's the owner of the team. But he, he wanted kept to play. saying, he wanted the, to play. the black guy wanted to play for the white team. Okay. And he kept coming to him every day for months. And he was like, I'm not I'm hiring no Negroes on my team. He said, you know what, my third month, 90 days, he said, you know what, I'm going to give this black dude a uniform and I'm going to give him a position on the, on the team. Because I know he's just talking crap and he can't really play this sport. So he gave him the position on the team. He gave him the uniform. <laughs> the guy did his thing. The black young man did his thing. He ran so fast that the owner had to look at him and say, boy, that sure is a fast Dominican. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't even say, he couldn't even say he was black. <laughs> Just couldn't even, you know, so I think that's the world we live and, in. And the mindset is this, because I even heard this. Once, once, once blacks are just given a shot, Mm -hmm. All they want is a shot. Mm -hmm. Wherever they've given a shot, they always take it and run it. Whatever it is, whether it's baseball, basketball, football. Think about every, every, every tennis. Every sport. Tennis. I, okay, remember, I, can, I can remember a time 
And I had to relive this. You worked at the country club, but you was never allowed to go out there. So one time when we finally got a chance to go out there, oh, this ain't nothing to do. Wow. What? Now we're on the sport. Like, the history is Tiger Woods finally mm -hmm. got real good. But well, honestly, Calvin, let's be honest. With our talents and our athleticism, wouldn't you try to keep us out? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. almost, I almost don't. Yeah. I almost want them to. I almost don't want to dominate it just to see I, that we can't I, do it. Really, I can actually <laughs> see you. Can you? Mondale was the best cheer. I love East High School. To this day, I love East High School. But let's talk a little bit about East. Oh, Tiger Land. I have my book here for my friend, Will Haygood. He's did, you know, did you know Will? I didn't know him. He's older than I am. I've met him. I've met him. Um, but I, he's younger, older than I am. But what I respected about him was that he really had a passion for being a tiger. And most tiger, of us do. Tiger land. Tiger pride. It, it, it's, it's in you, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think for maybe maybe time, so maybe in January, we're going to try to really get together with yes. all of the East High Tigers yes. alumni and just try to promote what it is that we learned about being a tiger. But just to stay on the conversation today, Let's, I wanted to talk a little bit about baseball when I was in high school. Okay. <laughs> this was in the 80s. Okay. Okay. What, so, what was going on in baseball at East High? Uh, so, in, in well, you just told me we was pretty good. Well, it was. It's, it, it, we're, we're really good. So See, not, but I think what was happening is this is why I think it's so important that we talk about history. Because by the time we were in the 80s, black boys really didn't like baseball. Really? Really? It was going, they I, did it when they were in Little League, because I remember, but then it just stopped. It, fa it faded out? It faded out, because it became too slow is what they would hear. It was boring. Um, it just wasn't entertaining. The parents didn't like going to the events that was two and three hour long, two hour, two and three hours. Yeah, it was, it just, the game does take about two or three hours. Yeah, That's and honestly, I remember dating a guy that was trying out for Ohio State. Baseball? And baseball, he went to Eastmore as a matter of fact. And I remember asking him, um, why would you try out for baseball? <laughs> just because I just thought it was so lame. I just didn't appreciate the sport. Slow, it is a slow game. Well, it was coming out of that place of it being a historical sport for African Americans in the 80s. Um, did you play baseball, Sean? Literally. Literally. Did, did, did you play that? Did but you, then, did you notice that it started? Did you enjoy it? Uh, I loved, uh, I wasn't real keen on fast pitch, so I stepped out of it once once I got older. Yeah, and then I shifted over to football. Football. So football and basketball became very popular when I was in high school amongst the boys. Each, each, each more. Wrestling each. went away. It wasn't really popular. Died. It was basketball or football, so I think that has a lot to do with why we're here today. Um, but I want to get Nawanda Turner on the line, um, and I'll call her. Nawanda Turner is has a, a son who plays collegiately now. Baseball? Baseball. Okay. Well, and I want us to talk about those challenges. Where's he, where's he playing? That's what we want to learn. Okay. I want to talk about that. At even more, did, did you ever meet Archie? Uh, no, Archie's a little older than me. Okay. No wonder I'm about to call you, girl. So I'm going to put Nawanda on, but let me know if you can't hear her so I can put her closer to the mic, if need be. Nawanda Turner. Hey. It's Rita for the Yates. How are you? I'm how are you? I'm doing good. Can uh, somebody let me know that you can hear Nawanda? 
please. Okay. So, Nawanda, you, you, you have a wonderful son that plays baseball right now. Is that correct? I do. Where's he playing? Who's he play for? Okay. Has that who he's, who's, who he's always played for? So, in college, yes. So, in college, yes. So, he's their um, starting their builder um, right now. So, he played the sport since he was six. And so, this was something that he loved. And he just, you know, we kind of just kept him in there and done what we needed to do to um, cultivate it and make sure he had the tools that he needs. So let me ask you, I'm going to ask you some difficult questions because we're trying to understand why African Americans don't partake in it more often today. Um, so just based on your experience, did he play with a lot of African American boys while he was playing? Right. And this summer was the first summer that he actually played on a team that had more than four um, minority children. Wow. parents in comparison to the past, what do you think has happened or what do you think he has created this? Sure. So, are, are, are we? So, the sport, as you see it, black folks is no longer 
a black sport anymore. No, and it sounds like based on what she's saying is we need some mentors and we need advocates, black advocates working within the sport to help pull the boys through because it seems like they lose either momentum <laughs> or they lose interest because at that point, no one is helping them cultivate the sport. Oh. Because traditionally, baseball was our sport. It was at, at one time our sport, mm -hmm. going all the way back. But it seemed like, based on what she's saying, we ain't represented at all. No, no we're not. And that's why we got to have the conversation, because I, I still find it unbelievable that that's the sport that pays the most money. But that's the sport that we're not a part of. <laughs> we're not getting, we're not. They're going outside the United States. Yeah, to do anything to just not make it. You don't see blacks in there. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, Opportunity for a nonprofit, if nothing else, for your son as he matures in the industry, mm -hmm. um, because I'm sure he's going to be able to relate to what he didn't have to be able to help next the next generation. Unfortunately, he may not have it. Uh, I'll continue to 
uh, ask that question, Nawanda, to see if there's anybody out there that may have a leg up on what is that next step for baseball when it pertains to somebody that's very talented. Um, I wanted people to use you, Nawanda, you and your son as a resource um, because let's say we've got that 10 year old that's real talented, that's on the baseball team, but they're discouraging him because they know it's talent. How to talk to that parent to keep them moving, you know? Obviously so. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of you for making the investment. I'm proud for your tenacity as a mother to help him uh, work his dream and see his dream through. Um, but I'm excited to see how God's going to use your story to help our community um, because there's just not many of us, just like you said. So thank you, Nawanda. I appreciate you. You're welcome. Um, again, um, I make, make sure I'm going to tag you on some stuff today. So. And also, Nawanda Turner is with uh, is one of our sponsors. Yeah, Calvin. Yeah, she sells paparazzi. <laughs> All right, Nawanda. I'll talk to you soon, babe. Thank you. Bye. Tell her that the next time you talk to her, uh, Jerry Harrison is the next generation of uh, baseball players. Mm -hmm. Contact him. Jerry Harrison. Mm -hmm. That is the in relationship to the Sam and the okay. All right, thank you. The grandson. Okay. So thank this you. Is Google and then they'll tell you the issues. Okay. The major league of the gentleman, the major league. Because what we have to do is we we have to reach back mm -hmm. and deal with those people that have dealt with the system. Mm -hmm. You know. It it boils down to community. Mm -hmm. you gotta, you're in part of community because you're losing sight of them. The role of sports, for the baseball, basketball, football. We're, 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 we're getting away from community. So, but I think in time, we got to come back. I think it's going to be a new community, though, and that's where I was talking to you about earlier, about gentrification. And although we term it as gentrification, it really is to me a middle process that was established so that we can eventually migrate into just a community. It's not a black community. It's not a white community. It's not Italy. It's not an Italian community. Because that's basically what Columbus was, how it was established, was all of these pockets of communities. But I think what regentrification will do is merge. Now, there's pain in the merge, though. In the process. In the process. But it is necessary in order for us to become one and be able to live to together. Bring, to bring us back. Yeah, and to live together, because we're all the same. Yeah. What keeps us separate is us believing that we're different. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my husband is a perfect example of that, and that's why I am an advocate of people living together um, that was what Martin Luther King was about. He wasn't all about, yeah, he was about we will all be together on one accord one day. Um, and that's how I believe. I don't believe that he's any better, anybody's any different than me. Just, just come together. 
Let's come together. And it's people like you, Calvin, that give us permission to continue the conversation, but is also passionate to make sure that we continue well, to my, have Well, my big thing is, what do we need for kids? Mm -hmm. you know, we become, because we're not going to be, you know, around forever. Mm -hmm. But we need, whether it's sports, history, we, 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 we get, we got to leave something back for them. Take, take, to take it in the moment. And I appreciate you at least reaching out into the community and impacting the community. Thank you, Calvin. I appreciate that. Today's topic was all about sports. We dug more importantly into baseball and the African American experience. We talked a little bit about the 614. Uh, we uh, identified some key players nationally. Uh, or actually, that's the last clip that you'll watch is some key players that played the uh, base played the African American baseball. I think the topic today was really important to have because we have to identify what yesterday didn't work and what is it today that we can do to be better. As Nawanda Turner had stated, we haven't arrived in a safe place when it pertains to the sport of baseball. We're still being ostracized, we're still being segregated, we're still being challenged uh, because as long as they can keep it, the sport at a certain pace, a certain way, a certain criteria, it limits other people and other cultures from being um, successful in it. So it is intentional. Calvin is, that's one of his words that he uses that I'm going to learn to adopt. It is intentional. Is it your intent to accomplish a certain thing? Because it, it looks that way. Look like a duck, quack like a duck, just right. It's a duck. It's a duck. It's a duck. Well, with Calvin's expertise, just sharing his um, stories as a young man growing up here in Columbus, he just told me, he worked at Macy's or Lazarus, yeah. Lazarus, um, in 1970s. And I think again, the more that we know about our past, the better we can be about our future. I love these conversations. The only way we're gonna get better is to have them. I thank you guys for joining me today. Please watch this last clip on my timeline. It's not a clip. It'll be on my timeline. And it's regarding the national African-American experience regarding baseball. I don't do any of this in vain. Everything we do is to help communicate, to be a resource, and to improve our community. Please continue to follow us. Watch us every week at six o'clock. Six o'clock, six o'clock, Facebook Live. I'm your homegirl and your lifestyle expert, Rita Fuller Yates, and I'll see you next time.